Greetings, my beautiful lovelies. It's Emmy. How are you? It's great to see you and welcome back. Today, I'm going to be testing yet another appliance gadget. If you've missed my other gadget testings, old and new, be sure to check out the playlist. Now, today, I'm here to check out a toaster that I read about, discovered, of course, on the internets. Now, this started a couple years ago. I'm going to give you a little backstory about this. I was researching a toaster made by Mitsubishi, which I will also be testing. So I was researching the beautiful Mitsubishi toaster. I didn't buy it because I said $300 for a toaster that toasts one slice of bread is absolutely inane. I've changed my mind. We all change and evolve as people because I'm so stinking curious about it. So stay tuned for that video. But I have forgotten about the toaster. And then, you know, in that time, this toaster that I'm gonna be testing today, the Balmuda, right here, is what I'm gonna be testing today. This toaster in this box also retails for about $300, but it's a little bit different than the Mitsubishi. So we're gonna be testing this one today, and we're going to see if $300 for this toaster is worth it. Well, what I was intrigued about this toaster and excited about is that it uses steam technology. So we're gonna be adding a little bit of water to our stale bread or our bread that we are toasting so that it has that really great chewiness of freshly baked bread, yet it's crispy and toasty on the outside. The design of this is supposed to be absolutely stunning as well, and based on what I saw on the internet, it, it looks it. So I've already opened this because I got the manual out. Now, when I read about it, everyone calls this the Balmuda or Balmuda Toaster, but in actuality, it's called Balmuda The Toaster, which I think is even better. Balmuda The Toaster comes with two little manuals. Really love this one. This is very, very visual. This is the guidebook. We have a beautiful piece of toast with a butter and it tells you basically how to use the machine and it includes baking times right here and where you place the toast, the mode that you wanna cook the toast in. So we have the sandwich bread mode, we have the artisan bread mode, pizza reheating mode, oh, pastry mode, reheating croissants and the like. And then we just have a regular baking mode as well. So you can bake, you know, gratins and casseroles as well. So very cute design, uh, comes with a rack. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Can I show you one of the features I love the most about Balmuda, the toaster without even using it? It's in this little bag. This is the measuring tool to measure the water to add to the toaster so that it steams properly. And did they give you a spoon? No, they give you this. <laughs> Mug. Have you seen anything so cute? Like this is the cutest measuring cup ever. If you are making one piece of toast for less than three minutes, you use half this amount or about three cc's. Anything over three minutes, you use the full cup. Oh my gosh, look at that. So stinking cute. And this is all part of the experience. This little mini coffee mug of water. This makes me so happy. So considerate and happy. Oh, I love you, little mug. And here's our little friend, our compact Bermuda. This is not a sponsored post, by the way. I purchased this with my own money. In terms of size, I'd say this is a very compact toaster oven. Look at this. The tape has been folded back so that it's easy to peel. I really like that. It's so nice. I'm not messing around with any, t like finding the end. It's just like, there you are. Okay, this, very nice, has a little pan in here. Very cute little tray, branded, Bermuda. Now, this you may notice is a little bit different than most toaster ovens. And this is the water guard. So that's kind of cool. So you pull this down and it reveals the water trough. And you put this back and it covers it up. So we put this rack in and then we can see it toasting in there. So what separates this toaster from regular toasters and perhaps justifies the $300 price tag 
it's the steam technology. So what that does is when bread goes stale, it's no longer moist. The gels, the starches that were wet once gelled no longer are because they go through a staling process in which the water separates from the starchy gels. And the water is still present. And in the Mitsubishi toaster, which I'll be testing, we're gonna reheat the water so that the starches re-gel. Here, we're adding a little bit of water in that steaming process. That gives us that really great, chewy, moist pull of the inside of a loaf. Then we're gonna use some higher temperature and then toast the outside so we have that lovely textural contrast with that crunch and that chewy, moist pull inside. That's what they say at least. And let's put it to the test. So the first thing we're going to bake is a sandwich loaf. So what did I do? As I baked a loaf of bread. I made this in my bread maker, the Zojirushi, which I've talked about in the past. Love it. It makes a very big loaf of bread and it's it's lovely. The timer setting is my favorite because then you can wake up to the scent of freshly baking bread. It is is just wonderful. So we're going to slice a piece of that. Isn't it cute? It does have two holes in it, which is often the case when you're using a bread maker. I'm gonna cut this side. I mean, hear that? Da -ding! That's the inside, gorgeous. Sometimes I like to slice my bread on the side. I find it keeps me from getting a more even slice for whatever reason. Wow. So I'm cutting this on the thicker end. That hole there is annoying though. I don't like that hole. Does this one have a hole in it? This one has a little, oh, see, it has a little hole right there because of the paddle blade from the mixer. So that's where the hole came from. All right, I'm gonna cut another slice because the next slice is gonna be more beautiful. And I want everything to be perfect for y'all. Yeah, look at that, that gorgeous. That's a beautiful slice of bread. <sighs> I wanna eat it right now. Okay, contain yourself. The problem with making this kind of bread at home is that we just plow through bread. Like we just go and the next day it's gone. <laughs> and it's such a large piece of toast. Like this is huge. Next, we place our, oh my God. It has a very smooth opening mechanism. I like that. And we place our bread. We're supposed to put the top of the bread in the front. That's what is indicated here. So we'll do that. Place that right here in the front. Okay, so for three minutes or more, we're supposed to use the full cup. And when I say full cup, I mean this cup. <laughs> oh my God, I feel like I'm in a dollhouse. Look, want some water? We're gonna pour this little cup, little mug of water into this little slot. Close this up, Boink. turn this on. We're gonna set it to the sliced bread option. There's all these different little options. We're gonna put it to sliced bread. And then we're gonna set this to three minutes. See those little dots light up and there's a little ticking countdown. Okay, do you hear it? Okay, something's happening. I can hear steaming. Okay, okay, the window's getting foggy. Yo, you're getting a steam bath, girl. <gasps> yes, it's steaming. Another thing that I'm super excited about is the croissant option because the day old croissant is just not good. So, can't wait to test that. All right, we're gonna come back in three minutes. And... Okay, our girl just beeped. Let's see the... It's beautiful. Alrighty. Bermuda, the toaster. Girl, look. So the bottom didn't toast as much as the top. Butter, yo. My butter could be a little bit softer. It's crispy on the top. I did notice that it's not as crispy on the bottom, but it smells fantastic, it smells like toast. Let's give this a taste. If the dog you ask. So good. Salted butter on 
bread oh my goodness and if you've never had thick cut bread like this toasted it's fantastic there's so much mouth feel and just wonderful textures going on by the way i've recovered my sense of smell and taste and i am so grateful and thank you so much for all of you who sent messages of kind words of encouragement wish me my sense of smell and taste to come back i super appreciate it and i am just so grateful that it came back so can i tell you that the taste is fantastic we've got a wonderful taste but beyond that we have texture look at this so we have bread that is moist and tender and toasty on top mm-hmm fluffy yet crispy mm-hmm mm. wonderful listen So good. So this bread recipe contains a little bit of butter and some sugar in it. So it toasts pretty readily. If you are reheating something like a Portuguese style bread or Hawaiian style bread, which has even more sugar in it, you would have to reduce the temperature because that will scorch even faster. So adjust the temperature to what you're toasting accordingly. English muffins, give it more time. So far, impressed. I specifically cut this piece of bread nice and thick because a lot of standard toasters can't accommodate a slice that's this thick so that's an advantage to a machine like this you can cut the bread as thick as you like or as thin as you like next let's test a day old slice of artisan loaf this is a durham round a boule love this style of bread as well and we're going to give that a toast and i'm going to slice it like this oh look at that gorgeous big holes crispy exterior, but eaten like this, fresh, it's a little bit firm. So we're going to pop this back into our toaster. That was interesting. Sound a little haunted. <laughs> we're gonna change the dial to artisan and I forgot to turn it on. And then we're going to dial this to three, I think and a half. I'm gonna do three and a half. We'll see how that looks. It's gonna do the same thing, steam and then toast. We are one minute down on countdown. I really like the gentle ticking of this as well. It's a kind of a hollow. It doesn't feel panicked at all. That's nice. Okay, let's grab our toast. -da. Another beautiful slice. That's a nice caramelization on the edges, the middle. Nice. And what I love is that it looks, well, besides the soft cooked egg, very similar to what is advertised. Is anything better than freshly baked toasted bread and the smell of it? Oh my, yes. The sandwich bread is delicious, milk bread style bread, fantastic. But as toast, this is my favorite because of that crunch. Can you hear that? Mm. Belmuda makes great toast. The inside is chewy, soft has a wonderful freshly baked texture, and the exterior and the edges are shatteringly crisp. That wonderful bit of nuttiness that comes with some added heat. You know that toasted nutty? Mmm, and that texture. Mmm, salted butter. Such a great combination. I love bread. So last night I baked pizza, and my youngest favorite way to have pizza is the next day cold, which I have to agree with him. It's quite delicious. But today we're going to be testing the pizza function on this toaster. So I've got salami and pepperoni we made for dinner last night. Yummo. And for pizza, we've been told to use the baking tray. I'm going to set it to pizza. Place it in here. Oh, I forgot to mention, there's also a crumb tray here that we can remove to clean up any crumbs. Wow, it sounds more cursed and haunted each time. 
And for pizza, it says three to five minutes. So let's go with four. Oh, I thought I turned it on. Four minutes on the pizza setting. Alrighty, I'll see you in four minutes. Let's see how Balmuda does. Okay, now we're gonna check on our pizza. Sounding good. Can you hear that sizzly, sizzly, sizzle? Look at that. Ready, let's give our pizza slice a taste. Itadakimasu. Mmm, it's crispy and it's very hot and oozy. Mmm, fantastic way to reheat cold pizza. The directions say you can also cook a frozen pizza in here as well. Ooh, ooh, super hot, oh my gosh. Oh, oh good. It really does taste freshly baked, but even better because the crust is even crispier. Let's taste the edge crust. Mm-hmm, great. Mmm. It is a little bit bigger than your typical toaster oven, but I like that fact because you can put in a baking tray, a small one, but you can't put too much into it. So you'll have to anyways. Oh, and pizza. Okay. Mm. And for our last trick and test, we are going to test reheating a day old croissant. Now croissants, croissants, however you want to say them, are a wonderful, magical thing. I made homemade ones, fantastic recipe. If you have not seen that video, which I'm very proud of, I'll put a link down below to that. This machine claims that it will bring this back to freshly baked. Let's see. Sad day old croissant. Turn on the Balmuda. I'm gonna turn it to the croissant or pastry mode. Let's see how haunted it'll sound. <laughs> I love that. Place this in here, right in the middle. And how long does it say for croissant? Pastry mode, croissant, three to four minutes. I'm gonna go for three and a half. Okay, see you in a little bit. Oh yeah, a little bit. Starting to get steamy. It smells great in here, it smells buttery. Ooh, it, she looks a little more golden, doesn't she? Oh, look at that. Gorgeous. Mm hmm. Okay. Oh, yeah. Ah, I can't even hold it. Okay, I'm gonna try anyways. Just burn myself for the sake of this shot. Oh yeah. A blast of steam just came out. Yes. Good sign. Let's give that a taste. Oh, it Chris on the outside, nice and shatteringly crisp, tender and chewy, light, delicious, fantastic. I think that's the best rewarmed croissant I've ever had, easily. I've never had any luck rewarming them, I've tried. I think the steam is the key, but how do you do that at home? I don't, I don't know how I would replicate that at home, except, I don't know, at any rate, Fantastic. I think it did a wonderful job with the croissant. I think of all the things that I've toasted today, I think this probably would be the most impressive because I think this is the trickiest thing to rewarm. If you microwave this, you'll get the soft warmth of the inside, but then the outside might be tough or won't be crispy at all. If you just pop this into a regular toaster, the outside gets toasted, over toasted often, and the inside doesn't get really soft and tender and chewy as it should be when you freshly bake them. Mmm, so good. But I think the hardest thing about a croissant is because it has so much butter in it, it tends to brown super quickly. And this does a beautiful job at just gently warming this without over browning it or burning it at all. Fantastic, super gentle. So my final thoughts on Balmuda the toaster, it's a fantastic machine. It does exactly 
what it says. The guidebook and the directions are simple, straightforward. They get you right <laughs> into the toasting process. There's nothing that you have to do. Just right out of the box, you can immediately toast something. And it toasts beautifully, exactly as instructed in the book, which I really, really appreciate. The build quality is excellent, super sound, and the design is lovely as well. It doesn't take up too much space. It is not a unitasker, even though it is very specific in terms of its usage. You can do a bunch of different things in it because it is a toaster oven rather than just being a toaster. The downsides I would say is the cost. This is an expensive appliance, $300. So if you live by a bakery and you eat croissants a lot and you want to warm them up to perfection, if you eat a lot of toast, if you need a sleek, stylish appliance, and if $300 is in your budget, then I would consider Balmuda the toaster. Alrighty, those are my thoughts on Balmuda the toaster. Let me know in the comments if there are any other gadgets you'd like me to try, new, old, expensive, otherwise. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that one. I hope you learned something. Please share this video with your friends. Follow me on social media. It's a great way to get in touch with me. Like this video, subscribe, and I shall see you in the next one. Toodaloo, take care, bye. It's time to finish the croissant. Croissant. Mm, 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 mm.